Today is Monday, August 29, 2005, and we are interviewing Robert Griffiths in his Voorheesville, New York home. He enlisted in the United States Army October 1942 and entered active duty in May 1943. He was discharged December 31, 1945. This interview is being conducted by Kenneth and June Hunter at 2.30 in the afternoon. Please tell us your full name and when and where you were born. Name is Robert Harold Griffiths. Griffiths spelled with a S on the end, which is kind of important to the family. And, uh, and when and where were you born? Born in uh, Governor, New York, and moved to Messina, New York, at the age of about a year and a half. And that was where I stayed for a long, long time. <laughs> and uh, when were you born? August uh, 14th, 1923. And what did you do before you entered the service? Well, after getting out of college, after high school, uh, I was kind of worked for some money for a year and then went to St. Lawrence University. And uh, St. Lawrence University in 1942 and was a freshman in the college when the military was looking for people either to, well, what did you call it? ASTP program? Well, yes. Yeah. To enlist? They, they, they interviewed all the people, all the boys and, uh, and girls, I guess, in the college at the time, and they were looking for the people that put into the Army, and they left. But the purpose was to keep us in college that, because we were all in there already and cut till the, the end of the school year. And in May, at, at the end of the school year in May, we were in, in, in the Army within, within a week. And uh, that's, that was the beginning of our my career in the military. Okay, where did uh, they send you for basic training? Niagara. Niagara Falls. Mm. Yeah, there's a military place down there. That's where we were inducted. And uh, from induction there, after having some examinations, physical examinations and other things they have to do to you, we went by train down to Alabama, uh, Fort Cullen, uh, Alabama, and into our basic training. And basic training went on for well, it was to go on for, what, 16 weeks, I think it is. Um, in the examination I had, before we, when we went to McCollum, they found that I had a hernia. And that uh, it just was noted that I did, and I wasn't having any trouble with it. But the, but the end of this, in the sixth week of basic training, a, a man came out to wherever the whole group was on training, and took me back to camp, and I was into the hospital, and the camp went in the hospital, and uh, we're, we're going to correct the uh, problem, the hernia, and uh, it, that kind of dragged on because they're going to send me to, or didn't finally send me to, Tallahassee, I think is the name of the place, and it's a military hospital in in Alabama, and. Uh, they couldn't send us right away because they weren't ready to take patients over there yet. And then finally, some, some time went by for that. And when we finally sent them over there, the hospital wasn't ready to do, do any surgery yet. So there was a delay in doing, getting the surgery done. And then this, this happened, I think, in the, uh, started probably in August. And then in, in getting, out of the out of there and over to the hospital, um, that took some time. Of course, I only got out of there in November, so uh, and I got sent back from there to go through basic training again. You know, and I went to uh, Georgia uh, camp. Oh, 
Benny Fusfield. Camp Benny. Fort Benny. Fort Benny, that's what it was. Yes. He started all over again with a 16 weeks basic training. So I, I mean, it's a matter of uh, losing all my friends that, I, that came in with me in the first place and going into a whole new new group. And um, but that was a 16 weeks training and I think that that must have gone into May or something like that on the, uh, in the month of the, of the year of 43. And, uh, and where did you go from the basic training for an assignment for a specialty? For, the, for, for, right for a, the what kind of special training did you, did they send you to a different school after you came through basic training? I never got through basic, well, I got through basic training in uh, Fort, uh, that, that program, that ASCP program had been abolished by, by that time. So mm -hmm. we were going right into the military uh, uh, excuse me, that, uh, it's, it's uh, infantry training, that's what it is. It was what, what infantry training in Fort, Fort Benning. And Fort Benning, then uh, when that was done, we went and assigned to a, a, a whole a big, a sort of department. Uh, um, and that, uh, that was just training to be sent overseas uh, when the time came. And um, can we stop that a minute for? Now, Bob, after leaving Fort Benning and completing the basic training and additional schooling, where you learned about the use of weapons and qualifying on the various kinds of weapons, you were then prepared for an overseas assignment. Can you tell us about how you left the States and what kind of transportation you left on and where did you land overseas? We, uh, we were assigned to a boat in uh, New York City and it's kind of a fun thing getting up in the city there with that. And uh, when we left there, it was a, it was a pleasure craft, I mean, a pleasure boat in the beginning because it had been used that way for I guess the army found it useful for them, and they, they use it. And there's a single boat across the ocean, and in, in a zigzag of wave, so they can avoid the German submarine. And uh, we landed in Liverpool, in England, and in September, in the September time, and uh, when we. we had to march through Liverpool after we were getting off the off the boat, and in, in the dark of night at that time, but we, we got some place some bedding, and uh, and there um, we weren't there for long. We uh, had to go make up our own bed out of a bale of straw that they had over there, and uh, we got straw we laid out on the ground, and and uh, a blanket or a, uh, something to use. I've forgotten, for example, what we had to sleep with. But uh, anyhow, they, uh, we had some people come around recruiting. And the recruiting was asking any of us that would like to be a, come a paratrooper. And they were looking for paratroopers, people that wanted to be a paratrooper, so that because the 101st Airborne had been in Holland on a mission and they were just coming out of Holland on that, and they needed replacements. They had to take some losses, and, and that, that battle was a big one with uh, the United States and England, and uh, went deep into Holland and had a bad time of it, but they did the job what they wanted there. But anyhow, they needed people. And uh, for a few of my, me and a few of my friends, uh, and others of course, uh, decided it would be a good idea right now to become a paratrooper. And it uh, turns out uh, we were taken to a training place in England, south of Liverpool, and, uh, and I guess the purpose, other people who went over with us went from there, England, right over in the France and uh, under the front, battle on the front. And uh, 
we avoided that by, well, we didn't avoid it on purpose. We, we avoided it because we were going to parachute jumping training. And we went to this camp where it was done and uh, for a training session, uh, we were mounted to a, a whole group of us in the, in the morning would be uh, doing uh, calisthenics and uh, all uh, getting exercise. I'm mean, not exercise, but uh, strong. They're getting stronger, and they were tough guys. They, uh, they were mean to you. You know, they're, they made you do things, and they, 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 was, they were they're important. They were they were. They were important. They, um, and then in the afternoon, the, the other half of the group would, would take the, the training of the uh, uh, exercising uh, in the afternoon, and we would pack our train uh, uh, parachutes. We had to get, learn all we could about parachutes and pack them and unpack them and pack them and unpack them. And this went over a period of oh, four or five weeks, I think. And, uh, and before our training was done there, and then that that was the routine every every day of the week, of uh, do your exercises and stuff in the morning, or what the morning or afternoon, which whichever they chose to do that, and then, and the other part of the day was back in your own shoot, and the other, or, yes, well I got ahead of it because. We packed shoots and we opened up and did it over and again, over and again. And finally, we we, we packed a shoot that was ours. And that was the one we were going to fill. So then we had a week of, of, of jumping. We, they took us to C-47s, uh, where the jump planes. And they took us nearby to a, a field. And oh, this is a funny spot. Uh, we lined, We got our all. Of, there was quite a few boats or quite a few groups of us, but uh, the 24 people would line up in the one, 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 one airplane, and uh, all, all packed up with the chutes on and hanging on, and there were stroke straps and stuff like that. And um, we lined up, and, and we, when we were loaded, the uh, we were. 24 of us, and they, they broke it off, and the two lines went, I'm making motions here, <laughs> two lines went in, and I I happened to be on the, I was in the middle of it, but I happened to end, I ended up right at the door of the parachute thing. I was the first guy out of the plane, and they jumped, they jumped uh, six people at a time. The airplane went around and around, and six people go out. Well, the first first jump, and it was, uh, I was the first one out, and um, you do, yeah, then you do, you do it very, very skillfully because you're practice jumping out of a dead airplane over in the fields, you know, and just jumping out into a sand pile. And you go through all the motions that they, that they train you to do. And you do it very well, you know, you, you stick your, foot, your front foot out and go out like that. And it goes, goes down and the shoot opens and nothing happens, you fall to the ground. And, it was good. It was fun, and um, several of our other people, some got landed in their uh, trees and things like that. But that, that went out okay. And the second second jump, then a few people quit. You know, that was that was they, they didn't want to do that anymore. And so our our load, our load got reduced by four or five people or something like that. And that mean then I moved out. I wasn't first in line. So then you, then you, you get the guys who are, are lined up, and then when the, when the jump master says, stand up and hook up, and you stand up and hook your strap up here to, to the cable out the, along the top. You walk down to the door, and you, there's somebody ahead of you. And he goes out, and then everybody just rushes to get out. Uh, out of there, and then, and then then you don't go out so neat, you know. You, you just go out any way you can go out, and you end up kind of looping around, and uh, kind of gets kind of snappy on you. So it, it, it all worked out okay. It, it, 
Fine. So was that a real thrill the first time you went up for a jump? Were well, you all up, keyed up? Or? It was It was a thrill. I, I enjoyed it. Did you have to jump with full equipment? No, no, and I never did. You know, my whole career, I never did jump with full equipment on it because you'll we'll see it. Would, why not when they're coming farther down on the road here? So, you know, just uh, just a pleasure jump, but but they jump pretty low. It's very fast. You know, by the time it seems like so by the time you everything the shoots open and you get your shoot your helmet. To, straightened out and you see where you are, you're almost on the ground. So, mm -hmm. so because I guess that's, that's the way to do it, you know. If too many people flying around in the air just to make targets for the Germans or something like that. How many jumps did you have to do to become a, a qualified when five. they felt that you were ready to go? And they had to make five jumps. And, yeah, and that's all. And, uh, and then from there, what was the experience after that? Where were you sent? Uh, did you have well, additional training? From, from yeah, from there we were ready to go. We uh, ended find the the the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, one of 101st Airborne Division was back in France then, by then, and uh, they flew us over there to uh, France and uh, then just distribute us amongst the people in the, in the different regions and different uh, the different regiments and stuff. And we were only there three or four days, I think. Getting in there. Uh, and the call came from for the Bastogne thing. Battle of the Bulge started and we were we were bagged up in all the equipment and um, put on trucks. And the trucks took us into the battle site. So we didn't have to jump in, in combat. And it, it, long in the course of the, um, it was night when we got got to where the, they were let us off. And I, you know, you couldn't see what you're doing. You're depending on somebody hollering and, and telling you which way to go. You know, and there's good, good groups of people, regions and companies and you know, stuff like that. And um, well, it's it's the it was cold, and we had to, of course I had to hike away from our where the trucks were unloading and get into the areas where they wanted us to. None, none of us know where we're going or what we're doing. It's, it's, the, it's our leaders that are taking us. And, you know, and, and uh, we got some place we were bedded down, and I'm not sure how many days we were there, but uh, yeah, I, think, I think it was the 19th of December when, when this happened. And so we were sleeping in barns or sleeping on the ground, and uh, the head just didn't come to any contact for a while. And we didn't have much of much for food, but uh, I think the um, just a few days before Christmas the um, the weather cleared and the airplanes came over and they were dropping uh, dropping food for us and stuff like that. And, uh, one time we were killed a chicken, got a chicken we were in people's uh, in people's yards, you know, in their barns and stuff like that, and um, uh, potatoes. It was uh, big windrows of dirt up there, up there beside the, in the yard there, and you dig in there and you've got potatoes. And, uh, that's what that's what we were eating for a while, but a couple of days, I guess. We, we didn't start to death, but it was short. But when the airplanes started jumping. Um, Dumpings, uh, food and, and, and rations. And uh, different, different, I'm trying to think what the K rations, I guess, was what they were. But <clears throat> we got something to eat anyhow. And we were started going in different places um, there. Like whatever was they had, they had to do. But then they could hear a lot of the battle going on, but we didn't get in, get into any of it until one morning. Um, I think it was Christmas Day, 
or morning, we, um, there was, all of a sudden there was something happened and uh, everybody had to scatter, scatter or whatever it was, and uh, we'd run, run, case, run, get you jump down a, with your rifle but behind the, the tree or something like that and your, all your other equipment. And there was a battle going on, and we, we didn't see, I didn't see any of it until there was, all of a sudden there was a, um, a tank down in front of me, and I was in the woods, and a lot of other things, and one of our tanks come in over behind me, and um, was shooting off over the head, over my head, over, I was laying down by the over the head, and there was rifle shots going on all, all over the place, and there was German, uh, uh, German that tank down the hill a little bit, and I saw a guy's hand come up on a pull up, pull the cap down, or something like that. And I, I later on thought I shot a, should have shot at his hat, but the, his hand or something. But, but I don't know. It's kind of all exciting and stuff like that. But at that moment, however, or within those few moments or something like that, I got shot. And I got wounded right in the arm right there. It wasn't a very serious thing, but it was. I you know, hollered call, call, to the uh, sergeant. Uh, uh, I got hit. And he says, "Go up and go back and, and take this other guy with him." And the guy with us, he, he got shot right through the kidney, and, her, and, and I was shot through here. And there were other injuries, of course, but uh, we, we had to walk. I walked with him and that kind of supporting him. He was he was hurting, but he was making it himself okay. And we went to a barn where we were told to go, and that's that was a barn. It was just a big old hay barn, and uh, he had it set up for a medical treatment place. And I was laid out in the bed, and I was there two days. Uh, Christmas for day was the day it happened. And uh, two days I was in there, and then uh, the, the the whole outfit were all all of us, all of the soldiers there were in, 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 surrounded by the German troops, and that's when that thing came up about uh, General McCarthy. Yeah, nuts. He says they, they, they want, they, Germans wanted us to retreat, uh, quit, you know, and. Uh, and he uh, sent a message back to him that says nuts, you know, they're not going to do it. So, so they they did, the army did break through. I think it was one of the armored divisions. Um, at one time I remember the 9th Division or something like that, broke, broke through the ranks and got into the, into the heart of the place and took out the wounded people and things like that and brought in ammunition or whatever. That was kind of the breakup of the, the whole German group. But um, so I was taken out in the truck, along with a lot of other guys, and ended up in the hospital in France. I don't remember the name of the place. I was there for a while, and um, the um, I was there for. I, I don't really remember how long, but uh, how, how long I was there, was, but I wasn't there. I didn't need to be there very long because the, the wound wasn't uh, serious enough so that it could be treated it and it got okay. So the only reason I, it, 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 I worried about it is uh, it's, it was probably about a sixteenth of an inch away from my, right, right here. So the bullet went right, right, right there, and I, my my face was right here, and I had the rifle out there, and that, that came right through there, and uh, it's it, it's about it's hair away from the bone. If it had been just that much more, it shattered the arm bone. So I was that lucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was the only wound I got. While you were out in the the field there, were 
You said uh, they find the weather finally broke and you're able to get supplies. What did the men do during that time to keep warm? And to, did they have enough food, or did they share whatever meager rations that they had? Yes, well, we share our rations, but uh, we, we, as I say, we got potatoes and cooked potatoes and stuff and stuff. We weren't in any action there. We were there, but we were kind of moving around, and it was ever directing us. So. The, the big scale, uh, they knew where we were and what to do, what they wanted us to do. But it wasn't much, it was mostly, uh, we didn't get any uh, into any battle until this one they just told uh, about. And, and, and a couple of days after that, uh, the, the armory, armory broke through. And uh, then they could take truckloads of people out and bring truckloads of things in. Of course, it's kind of risky too because there's still the <coughs> German soldiers around. <coughs> Excuse me. Did you take any prisoners yourself? No. no I didn't. I didn't. After I got out of the hospital in France, I was taken back, so I got back to the division. And I was with the division only about uh, well, three or four days, I guess. And we, they were, we weren't moving, and uh, it, we were on the front, but we weren't moving. It's, it's a couple of it's a couple of squads, but I can out I guess. But uh, I, I didn't do. But uh, nighttime, we had to stand guards and stuff like that. But, uh, then uh, within some reasonable length of time, they took to that our division out of the uh, or our regiment out of. Uh, there and sent us back, back of the line, and, uh, and that, I was in that when they, we, we went back and carried all our stuff back. And I was kind of having, having been out of action for um, a month or so. I, I, I wasn't up to strength, you know. I was, I was huffing and puffing pretty hard when they were doing that. It was snowing. It was cold weather at that point. So, uh, anyhow, the whole division uh, was drawn, to taken off the lines there, and then we, we kept getting, um, every, it seems like every night or afternoon, we'd get called in to tell, they tell us what we're going to do tomorrow morning, so we, we were making a move, and uh, the, we came morning, and we didn't do it. And that happened about, I don't know, three or four days, like that. Maybe there were intervals between those days, but uh, the Patton, Patton, remember General Patton? He, he was on the move, and uh, every time they set up something to do that, uh, that, that, that our division would be doing, Patton had got it all already done by the, the time it was for us to go. And that, that those jumps were going, you know, Pretty, pretty regular, but yeah, every other day or something like that, they were, they were moving. Cotton did the job, Cotton's group. And uh, so that was the end of uh, any combat that I ever got close to. Now I know that uh, you picked up a couple of souvenirs, if you would pick them up and sort of show us the uh, German uh, souvenirs that you have over there that um, well, I don't know how I don't know how we came by some of these a lot of guys had them but it was all all soldiers maybe maybe guys had taken them off dead soldier or something like that but uh, I think we had a chance to pick up a souvenir like that you did. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you get them okay? Did you get it? Yes, I got that. Now, you also have uh, a bronze plaque that, uh, a, what? a bronze plaque that uh, you, well, a lot of you fellows uh, no. received. Yes, this, um, this, uh, the, the, these were spread around the, the, uh, the division. I, I don't know how many people got these things, but I happened to, to be in line or, or someplace where somebody gave me one, and it was told that these were brass plaques that uh, were made by the people in Bastogne in a foundry there 
and these these with brass is the uh, and they melted the brass and, and from the old shell of, casings. Yeah, old shell casings, and it's good brass, and it's it's uh, a, a testimony or a test to the to the, to the mm -hmm. last on battle. I see the word nuts up in there. Uh, yeah. The quote from the general. Yeah. If you remove your Fingers just a little, the shows bass stone on the bottom there. Yeah, bass stone and then it says nuts and, and December, December is 44, it's up here. That's right, I don't know the date. Uh, December, Germany 44. Is there, this is a, a German soldier and this is an American soldier. Right there. And it's got a hanger on it back here. And I've had it. Well, I got it at the time we were, we were there. But, uh, and I've seen one other guy that had one, but it's kind of a nice souvenir. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, after the, the uh, combat uh, situation was over, what were you then doing? How did how was your time occupied? Well, we ended up uh, in Austria, and um, we were there for quite a long while, and not doing anything. And uh, probably exercising or something like that. But there was, we stayed there for quite a while, and wondering whether we were going to be going to Japan sent to Japan or not, and uh, this, when the, first, the war ended in, in Germany in what, March, wasn't it? What was the feeling like among the troops when they heard the announcement that the war had ended in Germany? Well, I don't, I don't remember the, any special uh, feelings, you know, that, uh, that we were still there, and uh, wondering what's going to happen to us now, I guess. And, The, um, th thinking probably they would be shipping us off to Japan, and it, it didn't, that didn't happen, of course. And, uh, but uh, so, so what, are, what, are, what, can we, what can we do? We, uh, this is a nice place to be in the so right in the Alps and now in Austria, scenic and beautiful place. Mm -hmm. Now. If you must have had some free time uh, in there to get into the, some of the villages and communities. How were the people over there? What was the devastation like? Uh, how did people cope and continue their lives there? Did you see a lot of hardship no, for them? See, we didn't see much hardship. Or no, no damages to houses or anything in there. And uh, it wasn't this uh, wasn't the center of where the battle was. I don't think. Uh, well, I know, not where we were right now. There has hadn't been any battle go through there. So we didn't see any uh, damage, like uh, you, you think, there's a war going on. Wasn't, wasn't any there. Did you have any opportunity to see, we've heard so much about the USO shows, did you have any of those while you were over there? Well, USOs, uh, when we were in England, uh, training for the pressure troops, uh, we got a, we got into, into uh, London for a 18 hour time or something like that, and uh, they, were, they were in the blackouts and stuff like that. That was that was quite interesting. We got while in while you were in England before going over in, into the combat theater, did you uh, experience any of the air raids that uh, and the buzz bomb attacks that the Germans threw at the British? I don't think so, but uh, we experienced uh, air attacks when we were in France uh, during the, bus, the Battle of the Bulge. There was German airplanes flying over during the night and uh, there was bombs going around here and there, but we never got close to one. Didn't happen to, but somebody did, but we didn't happen to. We expected for myself, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and the guys that were with me. 
So you didn't have to dig any trenches. You were fortunate enough to be in the barns or dig a foxhole. We were trained to dig foxholes, but we never had to do one. Did they issue you special clothing while you were at the Battle of Bastogne? No. Well, we wished there was. We had just leather boots. We had snow and freezing snow, and we had a lot of people had trouble, you know. And frostbite. There was frostbites and. Wet shoes all the time. That, that, uh, they, they did something about that while I was uh, in France getting my arm fixed, and they, they got some boots, leather boots, leather leather tops, and rubber boots. You know, regular honey boots. They, they, they got some of those in for the guys that were still on the ground, on their feet. You know. yeah. Was the cold bitter? Was it bitter cold? Oh. I remember. I remember uh, one time when we, we got into there, we had, had to sleep in the snow, and uh, sleeping bags. I, I slept in my uh, my uh, jacket, my coat, the big big wool coats we had. What do they call them? Mm -hmm. You know, you sleep in that in your in your blankets and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. it was, it's a pretty chilly place. Now I imagine uh, the pay, uh, you never saw pay until uh, you got back to a, a place that was civilized. <laughs> uh, pay, you mean? <laughs> well, I have, got to four months I didn't get any pay, but uh, that's, that's all right. Anyhow, that's, uh, that's the way it ended. We, uh, we, and we went back Austria. up in France from our the headquarters that we'd started from, and then after a while, after I uh, uh, getting out of Austria, and uh, then they, they gave us some time off, well, a, a few people at a time, mm -hmm. and we went down to Nice, you know, near Nice is, and uh, in France, southern France, had a week down there, and we, we, from center center of France, we went down on a train down to. Uh, the south the shore, the Mediterranean, and then uh, well, I guess it was, we had a, a truck, I think, that took us from there to Nice, and uh, we were there for a, a whole week and had the run of the town. And I take it it was warm and you could sit yes, out there? Yes, it was warm, yeah. The beach was still stony, the back then? It was stony, yes, mm -hmm. it was a stony beach, yeah. yeah. So we saw a lot of sights and things like that, and when we got back, we, we uh, got out of the training, and we, did, we left and we went back up to the camp. We uh, looked up there and there were some airplanes, C-47s, flying around with the doors open and the parachute things hanging out the door, you know. We said, uh oh we got to we got to make, make a jump well we got got back in the camp and we we had a choice if we didn't want to jump um, we just to lose our special pay we got you know paratroopers get an extra 125 dollars a week or whatever month I'm in or something like that so I didn't want to lose the 25 dollars uh, and most of the guys didn't so we jumped and uh, it's a it's a very Fun jump, you know, because they jumped from higher up. And there was only six guys, I think, in my plane for that trip, and uh, so you know, it was social, and you, know, you haven't got a, a sergeant up there and hollering at you, stand up, or no, do anything like that. He just says, "Come on, guys, get out of here," and, and you jump. And it was a jump, and it was, it was a high jump, and so it's, you know, you could look around and see things. It was fun. I remember that quite distinctly. Yeah. But uh, and, and my so it continued my pay anyhow. So, so then, then uh, where'd you go? Yeah. What was your next step from and France? From there, yeah, it was just time again. But before you know, the, the point system came up, you ever heard about that? Mm -hmm. uh, the people who got the most, most points. Uh, that was after the Japanese war was over too. So. Uh, the Japanese, the Japanese, uh, yeah, the, the, the Japanese yeah, theater of operations. Yeah. Yeah. 
So you accumulated the points, and then they would be, then it would send you back to the states. Yeah. Where did you leave from, and where did you arrive in the states? Where did you well, leave I from did, in Europe? Well, I left from in France, and I don't remember the name of this uh, village, and it was right on the shore, it was right nearby where the invasion occurred, I think, in France. But uh, I can't remember the uh, name of that town. And there was a um, Kaiser boat, Kaiser ship. Remember Kaiser's? Uh, Kaiser made all these ships and stuff like that. This is what the ship we had. And uh, it went out of there, it was across and across uh, into the Atlantic uh, through uh, south of England, just south of England. And. Uh, it was a nice ride until we got just out of, out of uh, into the explosion and we got into some very bad weather and uh, nobody could get out on the docks, on the decks, or uh, you, and most people couldn't, didn't want to eat anything because uh, you couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't eat it, it was sick. And it was a 10 day trip. And, and unfortunately, I guess I got a pretty tough stomach or something like that. I didn't, I didn't have any trouble with that. I mean, a lot of other guys didn't have any trouble with it either. And a, a lot of the guys are, you know, there's, there's decks in that boat. There's, there's a, that way down at the bottom, you come upstairs and there's a big deck there. And every deck there was in the boat, there was a game of public. gambling games. Oh, gam going Dice on. and cards. And and Dice, dice mostly, yeah. Can yeah. I give you people a glass of ice tea? Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we, we got to the, uh, we got to the uh, Gulf, Gulf Stream. And it, it's, it's, that's when you first settled down. And, uh, oh, by the way, uh, we heard uh, that after We'd been out, out on shore, and we were this, this a battle with the uh, ocean, you know. Uh, one of those the, the sea as uh, airplane boats, air, 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 aircraft carriers, carrier. yeah, uh, had to turn back because they got a, a deck, a wave that uh, bent up the deck on the front of the, mm -hmm. yeah, they had to turn around. So but that was tough sea, tough going. For the boats and, and the people in them. So you had pretty much easy coming back. You didn't have any assigned duties on the no, ship. No, no, nothing, nothing you needed so to do. both ways, he didn't have to do much. Mm. Just yeah. eat and sleep. <laughs> yeah, eat and sleep. And I don't, yes, yes, I, I, lots of things I was lucky with yeah. all during the whole process. And one of them was getting the top, top, top you know, those. Uh, the, mm. Bunks. Four, bunks. four tiers of bunks. Four Very tiers of bunks. I was on the top, you know. And then you've got a light bulb pretty close to you, you can read. With the guys underneath them, you know, they all they could do is lay there <laughs> and then get sick. Or, but I mean, I wandered around the, the place, you know, I was okay for that. The, the, the ocean motion didn't sick, sicken me at all. And um, we got to the Gulf Shores and it smoothed out, but it kind of got a little bit rough before we came into New York. I came into New York City, and uh, from New York City, the landing, we went to Fort Dix, and at Fort Dix is where I was discharged, and that was a three three day process, I think. And now, leaving Fort Dix, did you have to pay your own way to go home, or did they furnish you transportation on a train? They gave us three hundred dollars. I think maybe, I think it was three hundred. And uh, three hundred dollars mustering out pay. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's I guess yeah, three hundred mustering out pay. So did you go home by bus or train or? Well, I went into Brooklyn. I have an aunt and uncle that lives in Brooklyn. I went in there, and uh, I think I took a bus home the mm -hmm. next day. Yeah. And uh, I suppose you were all elated. You were happy to be oh, out? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I was wearing a, a mustache with a, with a roll out here, you know. And uh, my wife, 
she wasn't my wife then, but she was going to be. And she, I had, ta had taken that off overseas, and uh, she, in a letter to her, I told her about it, and then I got a letter back. And I, I had shaved it off, and so she wanted to have it. I said, oh, and so I had to grow it the second time. I, 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 was, I had it on when I got into, into Messina. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and uh, that was sort of the end of it. Was, that, uh, I, you took advantage of uh, one of the benefits the government had after that, the GI Bill, I would assume, to continue your education? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I didn't, uh, it was, uh, I forgot, it was December, yeah, I was discharged on December 31st. And uh, I didn't go back to school until this next September. fall, wow. yeah, September. So what did you do in that time in before? In that time I got married, for one thing, and uh, I, my wife is a nurse and she's in nursing class to school, so it was, it was Watertown, so. Uh, I worked. I worked in the water town, shoveling snow and whatever. Just trying to some guys building houses, and I got involved with those guys. So I was kept busy there. And, and when she graduated in June, uh, we went to Messina, and I worked up there for a while until I got to, got to school to school in the f fall of uh, '45. And, uh, what did you uh, major in? What was your field? Biology. Were you able to finish in three years, or did it take longer for you? No, it didn't take, no, it didn't take longer. I think two and a half years or something. Like two and a half years. But you had a long wait in so between was, getting that degree. Yeah, yes. It's a matter of, uh, of uh, seven years, I think, since I went into college in '42 and, came and got out of college in '49. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And then when you got and out meanwhile, of... Meanwhile, we went through war. Huh? Yeah. And then when you graduated from college, what did you do? What kind of work did you do? And well, I, um, I had a couple jobs working with a firm that uh, made uh, whey, made stuff out of whey, you know, whey of cheese, cheese bud, bud. And um, just, just for the summer, I guess, uh, for a while. And then I got a job at the state of New York. And uh, we retired, we, I retired from the state of New York in uh, 88, so 85. But where did that work take you? I don't think you stayed up north, did you, in New York State? No, no, I uh, was over in Sar uh, Saranac for uh, six months. Uh, as an aquatic biologist, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't have enough education in biology, fisheries biology, to get a, jo a job or even compete for a job in Social Security uh, until I had gotten more more uh, education. Well, uh, I didn't. Just, they gave me another choice: uh, go back. First choice is go back to college and get a couple of uh, a couple of courses and. Fisheries biology, or we've got a fish culture system here, which you could get into, and there's there's lots of opportunities there because there's this they had 18 fish hatcheries, and they had about seven of the fish hatchery managers were about ready to retire, so it looked looked good for a future. For the, me, you know, I've got the, the education of some, and uh, uh, I could get into the fish culture business. Or the state, and I chose to do that because Hopi was pregnant at the time, and we didn't want to. It was expensive uh, going back to college. And it, it like a, Looking back job. now on the, the fellows that you served with, we've heard stories from other people that uh, they've had good uh, relations with the, the men they worked with. They had good officers, and then there were some that said uh, that it wasn't that well. What was your general experience with officers and the, the kind of officers you had and the, and the kind of men you served with? I had no problems with any of them. I, I, I came home with a good friend, a friend that we still have, 
but uh, a lot of the friends I made as I went through these things. I was here a while, so here a little while, and here a little while. So you make friends here, and then you, you, you lose it. So you don't uh, don't really make a friend in this bread and keep it for very long. It was going through it too fast. And um, put this one guy. Have you been to any kind of uh, or um, reunions or so with the no, Airborne? No, I never did. Never did. So you mentioned you uh, made a good friend that you still stay in touch with. Yes. You and your wife yes. So he uh, he went. I mean, I met him when he went overseas. We, he was on the boat. We, we mm -hmm. played cards and stuff like that. So that's where I met him. And um, he's a he's a man from Tennessee. And he's a farmer, and he worked in the in the mines down in Pennsylvania. And uh, he ended up in the same. He went through a jump school with me and with a lot of other guys. And uh, when we went over to France, I got into a different. Uh, regiment, I guess, and he didn't. He was, as they called the names off, to go someplace or something like that. So we got split up there for a bit, but uh, we renewed the friendship when we got home. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so is there anything else you'd like to uh, add? Well, I, I, I don't think so. so. I'm not in the way of uh, the military. All right. Well, you had no. I don't feel confident talking about all this thing because it's it's so old that, uh, to me, and uh, it is, I stammer around the, some of the things Trying that were there. You know, that right. It's oh, not something time. that happened last week. It, it right. takes a lot of recollection. <laughs> long yeah. time. Well, thank you so much for sharing your experience with us. Well,